Welcome to the Cinnabar. Today we're getting ready to fire up our brewing tanks for the very first time. And we thought you folks might like to join along and watch the process. Now, we don't do a whole lot of caustic brewing here on the Cinnabar, but occasionally we get a few guns in and, and I kind of like to build them up till we, we have a few to do at a time before we fire it up. Um, and kind of today's the day. Now this, these tanks we got oh, several months ago and they were in pretty rough shape. You see a, a young fella that had, had gone to the same gunsmithing school that I had had bought these and he'd used them a few times and then he got a job out of state and he left them at his folks house and they were outside and they, they were pretty rough. So we've been kind of pecking away at uh, getting them cleaned up and painted and I had a, had a high school kid out uh, a few days this summer kind of interested in gunsmithing and put him at the sandblaster and, and he did a little bit of the work and painted on them and whatnot. So we're all ready today to uh, try them out. There was some, t some salt still in one of the tanks and we, we heated them up yesterday just to see if they were any good but they'd been used up and I kind of expected that but you know the tank full of salts is about $220 so we thought we'd give them a chance. But anyway so we're going to start from scratch today. We're going to mix up a new batch of salts. We'll mix up a batch of degreaser and we'll show you the process. We've got some a couple of guns that are they're all polished up and ready to go so we'll just show you the part or the the uh, process after the polishing is done we'll show you the, how to clean them degrease them and then get them blued and hopefully get that deep dark lustrous blue that we're looking for so stick around we'll start mixing up some of this uh, these bluing salts now the first thing you'll probably notice is that we're outside and there's a reason for that. These bluing salts are very, very caustic and they put off some really nasty fumes. So we had a choice to make. Either we could uh, frame in a portion of the shop and we may do that in the future and add a, a very good exhaust system or we'll start out out here. I've, I've just kind of framed in a, a little shed roof uh, so if we get a little thunderstorm moving in or a bird flying over that wants to leave some droppings in the tank, uh, we're a little bit protected. But these, these fumes can get away from us and we're just not constantly breathing them. So we'll, we'll start off here with uh, mixing up our, our salts. And w there's a ratio here. We've got a gallon of water to 10 pounds of salt. And it's going to take about four gallons to get our tank up to where we want it. So we'll, we'll go through this process four times where we'll put a gallon of water in and 10 pounds of the salts and then stir them up and, and get them uh, good and suspended rather than trying to do it all at once. And this stuff, the salts, of course, they, they you get some really fine particles and you really don't want to breathe it. It's kind of nasty. So. Put these in, and you might see that fine dust coming off of that. Okay, and then we'll stir that up really well, and then we'll go through the process again. And now that's in the water, we don't have that dust coming off of it. What happens here is we get, uh, if I remember this correctly from uh, chemistry class about 40 years ago, this is an exothermic reaction. It gives off heat as we mix these salts up in the water. So we'll mix these all up and then we'll, we'll allow that reaction to take place and after it, it cools back off, then we'll heat the tank. One of the things that's really important about the uh, this bluing process is that we control the heat in this bluing tank very very narrow in a very narrow range so if we've got this exothermic reaction going on at the same time we're heating the tank um, as soon as that reaction gets finished then we lose all that heat and our tanks gonna temperature is gonna drop and it's gonna cause us all sorts of problems so we'll continue here we'll get the uh, this thing all mixed up and get it cooled back off and then we'll come back and start heating our tank up. Okay, so we've got everything mixed up now. We're going to continue to stir it a little bit. You can see the temperature now is at about 160 degrees. In the midst of when we were 
um, mixing this all up, we got up to about 170 or so. But So we need to let that exothermic reaction just kind of play itself out, get the temperature back down to, to normal. And that'll give us a little bit of time. We, now we can mix up our, our degreaser, we can fill up our uh, rinse tank and, and get a few things taken care of and ready to go before we have to fire this thing up and start heating it up. All right, so now, so the bluing tank is just about down to ambient temperature now. It's just a little over 100 degrees, and it's in the 90s out here today, so it's basically back down to normal. We've got our, our degreaser tank uh, filled and the degreaser mixed up, so it's ready to go. And we've got it out front because we're going to degrease the part first, then we're going to take it out, rinse the degreaser off, and then put it back in the bluing tank. And we don't want to drag our degreaser and dripping into the bluing tank because that degreaser will kill the bluing salts, and we want to maintain those bluing salts as best we can. So let's get these burners lit off and, and get these uh, both these tanks to heating up. Okay, so this pipe burner in the back is one for our bluing tanks. Now, it's it's a larger pipe. It's got two rows of holes because it's gonna you have to have more energy. We're gonna have to get that tank up to a roll and boil at about 290 degrees, roughly. And we'll get more into that, the um, temperature and temperature control here shortly. Now, the one in front, of course, is a little smaller um, for the degreaser tank because we don't have to get it near as warm. It's, it's only going to run at about 160 to 180 degrees. So we'll, we'll let it warm up a little more slowly. We want to get these where we've got the just a, a nice blue flame, not so much of the yellow, so we'll adjust the orifice here. There we go. A little bit of yellow, but we've got a little bit of a breeze and that kind of creates that at times. Changes our, our air mix. There we go. Okay, so we'll, we'll let them heat up and we'll be back here shortly. Okay, so the cleanliness of these parts is critically important to the success in bluing. Any kind of uh, oils or greases or or smudges of any kind is going to show up in the bluing. So before we ever even go into the degreasing tank, we're going to go ahead and clean these parts up as much as possible with just good old simple green. This is good stuff. This is uh, Bob Dunlap, the legendary old gunsmith and, and uh, head of the gunsmithing department down at Lassen College for years and years. Just swore by this simple green. Sadly, Bob's recently passed and the wealth of knowledge gone with him. But um, So we're all gloved up. We want to keep our, the grease and oil off our hands off of this part. We're going to get it just as, as cleaned up as possible before we ever hit that degreasing tank. And, and that'll save our degreaser too if it doesn't have to try to cut a whole bunch of nasty grease and oils off of these parts. Um, it's going to help a lot. And of course, these parts should be pretty clean. Now, this, this one has a satin finish. It's been through the bead blaster, um, so it shouldn't have a whole lot of grease and oils on it, but it's going to have some. So, we'll scrub it with a simple green, rinse it off real good. And we don't want to do this ahead of time a whole lot because we've got bare metal here, and uh, we don't want it sitting around with just completely cleaned off and, and rusting up. Uh, before we get it in the in the bluing tank. Of course, we're in a, a semi-desert environment here and we don't have much humidity. The humidity probably is around 10, 12% today here, but still we wanna, wanna keep these things in a, just as immaculate a bare metal condition as we can before they go into the bee grease and then the bluing tank. Now while these tanks are heating up and our, our bluing tank now is at about 255, um, let's talk a little bit about heat control. Now as I mentioned, the, the uh, tank out front here with the degreaser in it, it isn't as nearly as critical. It can run about 160 to 180. We don't want to get it up to boiling because um, that can damage the degreaser and lose its effectiveness when it gets up to, to a boil. And of course, we're at high elevation here, so we boil at 206 degrees. So we want to make sure we keep it well below that. The, the bluing salts, though, Brown L's suggest 292 degrees for a boil with the bluing salts. 
And so we're going to be a little bit lower here. We're going to try to keep it between 285 and 290. If we get up much over 300, uh, the quality of the bluing goes down pretty rapidly. And if you get like up around 310, you can kill the salts and, and destroy them. They lose their effectiveness. Now, we've got our, our burners, of course, but we're not going to try to control the, the temperature, the fine control, with the burners. Um, we really control that with the, the amount of salt that's in solution in, in our blue and salt um, tank. So if, if it isn't boiling till quite a bit too high, then we need to add some water. If it's boiling too low, then we need to add some salt. And, and we can do that, we can find it just much easier that way. If we're turning the, the burners up and down, and, and of course, if, if that's your way of doing it, that's fine. But my, my way, I find it's easier to control the temperature by the, by the uh, salinity in our, in our mix there, or how much we have suspended. So when, when we get up here pretty close, we're going to see if, we, if we've got our mix about right. It's always the first time um, more difficult to, to try to get that mix just exactly right and, and get it boiling in that very narrow range. So we'll, we'll keep letting it come up and then we'll bring you back when it's about time to blue. Now we're going to start off because this is our first time using this system, first time with these salts and whatnot. We've got just a junk barrel that we're going to do a trial run through with. And this one, I think I mentioned earlier, I had a young fellow that was helping me get these blueing tanks all ready to go. I also had him polish up a uh, just a junk 22 barrel that I had here in the shop. And I think it was a learning experience. For those of you who have never polished a really pitted uh, gun part, this kid probably spent all afternoon on this barrel. It's an octagon barrel, and, and he got about the first half of it to where he wasn't even through with the draw file and the pits out. And finally I told him, just concentrate on one flat. And in a, an entire afternoon, he got one half of one flat and, and he didn't even get all the pits out of it. So if you, if you uh, decide you want to start doing some bluing, you really have to understand that the big work is in the metal preparation ahead of time. You could have 10 times as much time into the metal prep on a, on a pitted gun especially as the bluing process itself. Okay, so we're getting up here pretty close now. We'll keep an eye on that temperature pretty close and I'll go get my, my uh, personal protective gear on because when we start putting stuff in and out of the, these tanks, we want to make sure that we're not going to splash any of this really hot caustic material on our bare skin. Okay, now I've got some rubber gloves. I've got an apron, a rubber apron here. I've got safety glasses. Probably a, a better choice would be a face shield, but because we've got the camera rolling and trying to talk, I'll, I'll forego it for right now. But we've got a couple things going on now. We just hit a, a rolling boil here, and we're just a little over 280 degrees. So it's a, a little bit lower than what we would like to see it. But as some of that water boils off, um, then the concentration is going to come up a little bit and probably that temperature is too. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our, our barrel and get it into the degreaser. And it's going to have to sit in there for about 15 minutes. And when we come back after about 15 minutes, we'll see what the temperature is over in the, in the bluing tank and then we'll make whatever kind of adjustment we need to um, before we bring that, that barrel over and set it in. Okay, it's been 15 minutes now. We've got a good roll and boil at just about 290 degrees, just a shade under, so we're just right there. Let's take this barrel out. We're we'll going to take it over to our, our cold water rinse tank. Rinse all this degreaser off because we don't want to get this degreaser into our boiling salts for sure. Make sure we got the the bore degreased as well and rinsed really well. And then we're going to go right into our bluing salts. Okay. So about 288 degrees, which is just right on the money for this elevation. Okay, time's up now. We're going to pull it out. We'll rinse it off here. Then we'll take it in. Uh, 
We'll try to stop the rusting process and just see how, how it uh, blew up. Okay, over here to the hot cold water rinse. Now it's going to be hot. But I got to be, be aware that you're going to blow up a little steam when you do that. Okay, leave that there. We've got some stuff to take out of the um, degreasing tank and put into the blue and tank. Now we've hit this with WD-40 and hopefully you can see that deep, dark, lustrous blue on the one flat that my, my helper got polished up. If we turn it a little bit, you can see the, the other sides with the, the pitting underneath. And of course that's a, a dead giveaway to uh, a re-blued gun if there's pitting underneath the blue finished. Okay, I think we're going to be successful. Let's go uh, blue some more parts. Okay, so we're just ready to take out our, our last bluing batch of the day. This one's a Winchester Model 37 that uh, the guy that brings us our, our animal feed brought over. It's an old family gun and it was just a rust bucket when it came in. So let's kind of see what the receiver looks like now. Oh, yeah, that's a whole lot better to look when it came in here. Let's get it rinsed off. Now the barrel. Oh boy. What a difference. What a difference. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, now the next step get that out of the way. Now the next step is we, we take them in and then we want to kill the rusting process. And we do that with a water displacing oil. Now a lot of people use kerosene um, and kerosene's great. I didn't have any today so the next best thing is WD-40. Now I know almost everybody says WD-40 has no place around a gun. Well this is the one exception to that. It's a great uh, substance to use to, to kill the rusting process to displace all the waters and the salts and everything that are in there. Now we've got all these parts out of the rinse tank and oiled up and I know I'll catch some flack from some people about using WD-40 for this process but that's what we were taught to use in gunsmith school and it's what worked well for me in the past. Now it's perfectly acceptable to use kerosene or Brownell cells of water displacing oil of their own for this uh, a particular application but it's extremely expensive um, over a hundred dollars a gallon whereas kerosene and WD-40 are of course a, a lot less money um, but the one main thing is is to use a water displacing oil rather than a type of oil like most gun oils that have rust inhibitors or corrosion inhibitors in them because we've just introduced a controlled um, black oxide rust to these barrels and until it cures out those rust inhibitors can attack this this fresh uncured bluing. So we're going to leave uh, this kind of oil on it for four or five days and and then when we, after it's all good and cured then we'll go uh, clean it all back up and put some gun oil on. Now there's just one last step in the process for any of the parts that have a screw or a pin in them, those bluing salts will creep into all those little cracks and crevices and you think you got them all out and then days or even weeks later, some of those salts will start creeping out of those little cracks and crevices. So we, we have to neutralize those salts that are left in those places. And so we, we typically if we've got big parts, like if you've got a barreled receiver where the barrel screwed into the receiver, we would do that in a bluing tank. But all we had was some small parts here, so we just kind of set it on a hot plate here and got us a witch's brew going of uh, neutralizer. And we'll let these go at about 130 degrees or so for about 45 minutes just to neutralize those salts. So let's take a little closer look at these parts. And you see right up front we've got a, 
a uh, shotgun barrel here and look at the the deep dark lustrous blue on the barrel there it looks great now I thought this was a model 37 but it turns out it was a model 37 a which makes it a post 64 and you can see that that slight plum color and maybe even exaggerate a little bit because of the bright light but anyway that's common on post 64 receivers they don't take caustic blue very well and they turn that kind of plum color so well I've talked to the customer and see if he wants to go ahead and do a rust blue on that receiver or even a black Cerakote I've got a black Cerakote a couple of the uh, aluminum parts like the trigger guard on this gun anyway so that won't be any kind of an issue then we'll come over here we've got a, a uh, bolt and extractor for a model 94 Winchester for another project Project. and then a real special project for a special customer and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we put this gun together but uh, there's a, a Colt Walker project gun it's a reproduction that was sent in just to fit the grips and then he decided to go ahead and, and blew it to to uh, protect it because it was in the white so we'll put that one together here shortly and talk a little bit more about it and then we see this barrel that we used this old Junker 22 barrel the one flat looks pretty good where it was polished up and that's not even the right flat, so I guess I should get it around here where it is. There we go. There's our, our one flat that's polished up really good. Now, this one's a good example because we didn't get all the rust off of it down here where it wasn't polished up. And you can see that there is no way we're going to blue over rust. So you have to get all of that rust out of there. And if you've still got some, some pits in there that have some rust in the bottom, they're going to show up like a sore thumb. Okay, so we're just about finished with this Colt Walker reproduction kit. Um, this, this thing came to us uh, as, a, as a project. It was unpolished in the white. The grips were, were quite a bit oversized. And the gentleman that owns it asked me to go ahead and fit the grips because he wasn't real confident in doing it himself. So we went ahead and they, they fit up really nicely and finished really nice. And then we talked about it and decided to go ahead and blue the metal parts to protect them because they were in the white. So... We moved kind of up, getting our, our bluing tank set up to, to, to get this done. Because as I mentioned, this is a, a really special customer and a special project for us here on the Cinnabar. The gentleman that owns this had a long career in the US military as a chaplain, been in several war zones. He's also an ordained Ukrainian Orthodox minister. So you can imagine that the invasion of Ukraine uh, affected him deeply, and, and deeply enough that even though he's retired and in his 70s now, he went down to the Ukrainian embassy when the invasion took place and, and volunteered his services. And at that time, they didn't need him. But there's been so much attrition um, among the clergy in Ukraine, uh, being captured and killed, that they, they needed his services now. And soon he'll be leaving for the Ukraine. So we wanted to get this done for him and back to him um, because obviously we, we have a great deal of respect for the man. Now we've got a, a, uh, an appointment with this gentleman when he returns from the Ukraine to come down to the Cinnabar and we'll do some shooting and hopefully brings this revolver with him and uh, we'll, we'll make sure and, and film that experience. Um, we're definitely looking forward to his return. We'll get this thing kind of put back together. Just a just a beautiful gun. Now, we know that originally these would have had a case color hardened uh, frame here, and we're not set up just yet to, to color case harden, and he, and he didn't ask for that to be done. But um, maybe by when he's in, while he's in Ukraine, we'll get our color case hardening all finished up and uh, be able to do that service. And when he brings this down, maybe we'll go ahead and, and get a color case hardened for him just to, to finishing touch. We want to wish him absolute best and we can't wait for him to, to be done with that, that uh, particular tour and, and back here in the States and over here to the Cinnabar to, to do a little shooting. Now I'll tell you this episode was a real challenge to do by myself. To do everything involved with, with the bluing process and cleaning all the parts and trying to film, I got one heck of a workout. And it probably wasn't as... as uh, thorough as I, as I would have liked to have been, but uh, I did the best I could with it. Now this is the process that I learned when going to gunsmithing school, and, and I by no means believe that this is the only way to do it. So if, if you've got some experience with bluing and you want to share it, please go ahead in, in the comments and share. But I would, I would ask that um, be respectful. I'm, I'm always shocked at some of the comments that from people who believe that 
they know everything there is to know about every subject and want to belittle anybody who does it a little differently than them. Um, most of our comments on this channel are, are just wonderful, but um, if you do want to share and, and appreciate it if you would, uh, just be respectful and, and you don't need to belittle anybody and whatnot. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you maybe learned a little something. And uh, if you'd like to share a little of your experience too, we'd, we'd love that. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.